Western New York, they're still glowing over the Buffalo Bills' great season. Tonight, the Buffalo Bulls take center stage as they run with the Ohio Bobcats. We welcome you to Alumni Arena here at UB. Robert Lee and former Princeton Tiger Noah Savage with you. If you've never watched Ohio's dynamic point guard, Jason Preston, you're in for a real treat tonight. Yeah, he's a triple-double threat. He's already had two in his career. He's a big guard with elite vision, and everything on the offensive end for Ohio runs through Jason Preston. One of only three players in the country averaging 15 points, five boards, and five assists. It should be a high-tempo, fast-paced game. Buffalo is the highest-scoring team in the league. Yeah, if you blink, you're going to miss something when the Buffalo Bulls are playing. They're the best rebounding team in the league. That feeds their fast break, and if they miss shots, they go and get it off the glass. The number one offensive rebounding team in the league with 14 a game. Should be a good matchup tonight between two teams that are in the middle of the max standings, 12 teams in the league. Ohio comes in five and four, they're in sixth place. Buffalo four and three, tied for fourth place. Jeff Bowles, an Ohio University grad, class of 95 in his second season, back in Athens. And Buffalo led by Jim Whitesell in his second season, 26 and 17, his record after four years as an assistant under Nate Oates. Buffalo in the black jerseys, Ohio in the white. And we are set to go. Our officials tonight, Bill Eck, John Floyd, and Luke Schumer. Yeah, both these coaches empower their teams to make decisions. They're playing a high tempo. And Robert, this is what you love to see. It's going to be a pickup game atmosphere, and it's going to be up and down all night. These are the types of games that players really love to play in. Not a lot of long possessions, and starting the scoring is Jonathan Williams. He's a gym rat. And at 6-5, but really strong with perimeter skills. He's a mismatch problem because he can play the three or the four. Third in the league and scoring 20 points a game for Williams. Taking it inside and scoring is Dwight Wilson the third. And Ohio has that one-two punch inside. Dwight Wilson is that old school on the block He's got every move, and sometimes he doesn't even jump with the little flipper. Excellent starting five for Buffalo. Keep an eye on Williams and four-year standout Javon Graves. A three is up and in for Jonathan Williams. And that's what's taken this game to the next level. He's become a great shooter at 37%, and that's a product of his living in the gym, loving the game. Preston will run the show for OU, number zero. Also keep an eye on Ben Vanderplas, a multifaceted inside-outside player. Floating it up to the rim and scoring is Ben Roderick. Ohio's a really great passing team. They lead the league in assisted turnover ratio. They rarely turn it over, and they really know how to find each other. That was a great pass. Mbala down low, and he banks it off glass. It's rebounded by Preston. And Josh Mbala wants that one back. Easy one in front. Preston turns the corner. One-handed pass into the corner for McDay, and he is fouled. Now, now you're seeing what Jason Preston does so well. He comes off the pick and roll, and he's got the ball in his left hand. Look at the no look. He looks out to the wing first and then fires it to the corner. That, that's elite. I mean, the way that he, that's like a quarterback going through reads while he's in the air. That was great. Preston, 6'4", 185 pounds. So a big man at the point guard position. McDay from the corner, and it's good. That's the best thing to do with a great playmaker, surround him by great shooters, and Luda McDay, 35% from downtown. Turnover at the other end. Jason Preston knows how to switch gears and get those long steps into the lane. And then that's just same side help. I mean, that's a mistake on Buffalo's defensive part. You got to give Jason Preston different looks off the pick and roll. Ohio has hit three straight shots to start the game. They lead the Mack and field goal percentage as a team 48%. Make it four in a row to start the game. Ben Vanderplas. And there's the other hand of the one two punch where he can take inside on the block and then also take you outside to the three-point line. Mid-range jumper for Williams. Clearing the glass, Jason Preston. Williams has all five of UB's points so far. Nice extra pass for the Roderick three. 
First missed shot, although it did end up going into the basket <laughs> after it hit the shot clock. Yeah, that, that's who he is. He is a driller. He's got the smooth stroke, 47% from downtown. And if you've got to choose between Ben Vanderplas and Ben Roderick, it's pick your poison. They can both really shoot it, but you cannot leave number three in white. Jim Whitesell leading the Bulls, and he inserts into the game David Nickelberry, a 6'7", senior off the bench. Nice feed down low for Williams, and it's knocked away. Nickelberry, awkward shot. Last cleared by Vanderplas. Okay, Vanderplas showing you why he's such a high IQ player. Two chances at a block, and he went vertical both times to not foul. Oh, Preston hangs in the air and scores. His first two of the game. It's just so good when a player can play at his own pace. And he takes those long steps, and even he's smiling. That was a little you know, three-ball corner pocket off the glass. Travel. Traveling called on UB. Bulls have not scored in three minutes. But one of the big no-nos in basketball is don't jump the pass. And that time, I think he wanted to pass that the whole way until the last second. He was able to bank it in. What a shot by Preston. Who already has two boards and assists and those two points. Ohio five out of six from the field. Pass deflected back to McDay. 13 on the shot clock. We don't expect the shot clock to be a big factor tonight, but it is down to eight. One-handed pass again, a bullet to McDay, who can't cash in the three, but it's rebounded on the weak side by Vanderplas. He traveled. That's a tough one, but we've seen two passes already, Robert, that players won't throw their entire career, and Jason Preston is an elite and a special playmaker right here. Up in the air, look away, dime. leading the way in tonight's two teams, Buffalo and Ohio, in the middle of the pack. We're here at the concourse at Alumni Arena. Robert Lee and Noah Savage with you. Noah, these two teams both looking to start gathering some momentum and moving towards the top of the conference standings. Yeah, and one of the big storylines is just going to be, are you going to have to shut down and pause because of COVID? And Toledo's an excellent team, but they've played so, much, so many more games than some of the other teams in this league, and that's just going to be an ongoing storyline is can – Buffalo, who a lot of people around this league thought would be much higher in the standings, can they get some rhythm coming out of this disrupted schedule where two of their last games were canceled at the last second? Buffalo has not played since last Thursday, eight days ago. They did have two games scheduled. One was canceled against Northern Illinois, and then most recently Central Michigan was already warming up on the court here at the gym. And the game was canceled about 25 minutes before the game was scheduled to start due to a COVID positive from Central Michigan. This is a great league. I mean, Toledo's number eight in the mid-major poll right now. And there's a lot of teams that have a chance down the stretch. It's just going to, luck's going to play such a part down the stretch for all these teams. Who can stay healthy? Who can stay on the court as Preston missed the bank shot? Grabbing the rebound, Wilson goes up strong and scores. You just don't see Josh and Bala get overpowered that often and how about the flex love it Wilson a transfer from James Madison averaging 15 points a game seven and a half rebounds Ohio on an 11-0 run and Preston swoops in for the rebound OU looking to extend this 11-0 run in an eight-point advantage now Danny Ainge when he's evaluating college point guards for the next level one of the things he looks at is rebounding. And you can already see early in this game, Jason Preston just has a nose for the ball, and his court awareness is elite. He has four boards already. It's Buffalo on a four and a half minute scoreless drought. Sagu, the offensive rebound out for Williams. 
pushing off on the rebound was Nickelberry, his first. And that was a key going into the game. The head coach, Jeff Bowles, you've got to keep Buffalo off the offensive glass. They get 14 a game, and it's not enough to just get a stop. You've got to clean it up and make sure they don't get any of those easy putbacks. Colin Granger checks into the game for Ohio. He plays about five minutes a game. Also into the game, Mark Sears, a freshman who's really on a tear, averaging 15 a game over his last seven, 10 points a game for the season. He has the ball in his hands right now. Yeah, he came to Ohio late from Hargrave Military Academy, and he just had to quarantine alone on campus for two weeks when he got to school. So, you know, Coach Bolt says he's ahead of schedule where they thought he would be. Roderick off the mark after some good passing led to an open three. Nice look for Hardnett, who hangs in the air, scores in a foul. Breaks a five minute, 20 second scoreless drought for the Bulls. Yeah, Laquil Hardnett is coming on strong. He missed some time with some injuries, but now he's back and showing you what Philly strong is all about. Great backdoor dime and then powers up through the contact. Hardnett comes off a career high 13 points on four out of four shooting in Buffalo's last game against Eastern Michigan. Missed the free throw and Vanderplas clears the glass. As you can see Ohio early really trying to slow this tempo down. I mean, this is a little bit unexpected. You know, I think Coach Bowles kind of wanted to throw us off the descent a little bit, Robert, but I think they're really trying to run some offense, get into that horn set, and then put Buffalo in some pick and rolls. Turnover for the Bobcats. Not a live ball turnover, though, which Coach Bowles was very concerned about. Yeah, that's the new term is no pick sixes, right? So you don't want those steals that lead to easy layups. You're going to turn it over, make it a traveling or something where the ball goes out of bounds. As the rebound comes away to Roderick. Sears. Ranger, the baseline jumper, and it's rebounded by Brock Bertram. He's kind of caught in that no man's land. Wasn't a layup and wasn't really a 15 foot jumper. That's a tough shot. Offensive foul on Harden at his first. And again, you're, see, you're seeing Ben, ben Vanderplas. He's tough, but he's also so heady, sitting right on that right hand and able to establish defensive position early. Both these teams were projected to be among the top teams in the league. Ohio picked second in the preseason poll behind Bowling Green. Buffalo was picked fourth. Buffalo has dominated the league over the last five or six years, winning four of the last five tournaments that have been played, which of course does not include last season when the tournament was not held in Cleveland. And a foul will be called on Granger. And that's a good call. That doesn't get called enough when Colin Granger just lays on top of Ben Bertram where that's got to be a foul. The Bulls over the last five years have gone to the NCAA tournament four times under a couple of different coaches. Had never been before. Won a couple of games also once they got there. Tremendously successful. Won 32 games one year. A school record in NATO's final season here in Western New York. And how good is Nate Oates' team this year in Alabama? They are awesome. Just running through the SEC right now and kind of established some of the staples that still live on here at Buffalo when getting up and down, shooting the three, and playing great defense. McDay with the emphatic block on Javon Graves. It's two players from the same high school, both from the Akron area, and both played at LeBron's alma mater, St. Vincent, St. Mary. Quick fire three, and it's out of bounds to the Bobcats. Yeah, Buffalo just looks a little bit flat early on, a little bit frustrated with this Ohio defense. They haven't been able to get enough stops to fuel their break, and then they haven't gotten their other bread and butter, the offensive rebound. Ohio has controlled the action early on. Backdoor look. Saved and bounced nicely by Sears. This is Mason McMurray in the game right now for the Bobcats. And yeah, that was almost a turnover. 
Wilson to the rim, and he scores. It's a great feed, but that was an almost a turnover in Mark Sears because he stopped cutting. And Jason Preston saw him open, and he didn't even know he was open himself. <laughs> Six points now for Wilson. Down the lane, awkward shot, and it will lead to a foul. Ohio's dynamic point guard, Jason Preston, has a story that you've got to hear to believe. We'll tell you all about him when we come back. You're looking at Ohio junior Jason Preston. He grew up in Orlando, his mom Judith passed away from cancer when he was 15 years old. He moved in with other members of his family. As a senior in high school, he was six feet tall and weighed 140 pounds. He averaged two points a game, and he was ready to just go to UCF, his local school, to study journalism, and then things started spiraling upward. Right, he went to the Believe Academy, and originally he wasn't on that third team. They have four teams there. It's a prep school in Athens, Tennessee, and he asked to be demoted to the third team and all he did was drop a triple-double, which they promoted on their Twitter, their Instagram. And then he was offered a scholarship from Ohio. And if you look at a guy who was 6'2", 161, to now a 6'4", projected second-round draft pick at this point as a junior in the NBA, I mean, he's the, he's the hero of every kid ever who was saying, hey, coach, you got to give me more time. I could do more. And the fact that he believed in himself and stuck with it is, is just such an inspiration. And he's now being seen as a legitimate NBA prospect. His head coach, Jeff Bowl said his vision, his great in space, the pick and roll. And he reminds him of players he coached at Ohio State like Evan Turner and D'Angelo Russell with his anticipation with his passing. He's a big guard. Yeah, and Coach Bowles wasn't like, yeah, maybe he'll have a shot. He was like, he'll definitely play at that level. That's the level of confidence he's got in Jason Preston. Foul on the rebound against the Bobcats. Now, I can tell you, having played pro in Europe, I've played with some NBA guys in some off-season workouts, that when there's better players around you, you get better, but especially if you're a player like Jason Preston because there's more space to work with, there's more shooters. And when he throws these crazy no-look jump passes, now that's an NBA guy in the corner. So, so I think he's, he's definitely going to play in the NBA for a long time. Three from the corner for Bruton, hit the side of the backboard. Preston on the run, one on one. Preston, Euro step to the rim, blocked away and out of bounds. Stays with Ohio. Preston really burst onto the scene this season in one of their first games when they played at eighth ranked Illinois. Ohio only lost that game by two points. He had 31 in that game. And right here, just a little too much Euro stepping. Like I think around the country, defensives have learned how to anticipate that move. You know, five years ago, it, it was catching everybody by surprise, but not so much anymore. Vanderklaas, awkward shot, clearing the glass nicely is Brock Bertram. Yeah, Buffalo just needs to pick up the pace here, get into attack mode. Javon Graves doing just that with his first two of the game. Yeah, Javon Graves has been so good for so long, 15th in Buffalo history and scoring at over 1,200 points a game. And Coach Whitesell said he's always been great in the second half of seasons. Sloppy turnover. Bruton towards the rim, reverse layup hit the bottom of the rim. Sloppy sequence here, coming away with it as they end up throwing it into the corner for another three. Unsettled situation, but a fresh shot clock for UB. Hardnet. Nice move to the rim and a score. So now Buffalo is starting to look a little bit like themselves. That Laquille Hardnet rebound, that's Buffalo basketball. There's a box out, and he just goes right over the top and gets it to keep their possession alive. Nice lead for Wilson, who puts in the easy layup. Good job by Sears finding his big man. Eight points already for Wilson. And yeah, Mark Sears was completely cut off and had nowhere to go. What a dime inside. Graves, step back three, knocks it down. Javon Graves averaging 15 a game this season. First team All-Mac last year. He's got five points. 
He's a straight A student. Coach Weitzel said he's the type of guy you want your daughter to date. He really does it all. And that was just, I'm better than you, right to left cross, pull up and shoot the three. Jumper in the lane is good and a foul for Mark Sears. He's got great shiftiness and you saw on that play that as we take a look, this is Mark Sears showing you his versatility as he attacks defenses, great at switching speeds and just kind of probing. He was able to dish that off to Wilson inside and then right here, just that probe dribble. Nobody shows on the pick and roll. Pop it from 15 and one. Keyshawn Bruton picks up the foul. It's his second, he goes out of the game as Sears rattles home the free throw. First three of the game for Sears. Already six different Bobcats have scored. Bench with the Chana defense. Energy from the bench, such an important part for every team in the country this year to bring some of that energy that might be lost without fans in this arena. Sagu turns it over. No, a foul. It's called on Sears, his first. And Dwight Wilson did not like that call. He thought he had the steal down low. But it's, you gotta be careful with your reactions with the refs. There's, there's nobody here. They can hear everything. And you know, little reach from behind is a foul. It's for sure a foul, but Dwight Wilson's gotta be careful. They can hear everything word he's saying when he's complaining about that call. Nice job finishing, falling away from the basket by Josh Mbala. His first two of the game. Off the nice feed from Hardnett, who's provided a nice spark off the bench. Yeah, the Texas Tech transfer from Bordeaux, France. Big body inside, Josh Mbala. Vanderplas got to be in the corner on that pick and roll. He's taking away the drive. Midday, difficult shot. Rebound, Jonathan Williams. Scored the first five points for the Bulls. Hasn't scored since. Really good on-ball pressure by Ohio right there. Another foul on Sears. Will be his second. And will send us to a timeout. Buffalo getting back into the game, trailing by four. Saturday primetime matchup on ABC and the ESPN app. LeBron, AD, and the Lakers are on a seven-game road trip that takes them to the Garden in Boston to battle the rival Celtics. Our coverage begins with NBA countdown at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. LeBron James now and will forever be the most famous graduate of St. Vincent St. Mary High School in Akron, Ohio. But there are a couple alum playing in this game as well. Javon Graves, a senior for Buffalo, and London McDay, a sophomore for Ohio. To give you an idea of how long LeBron has been in the NBA, London McDay was a toddler when LeBron started playing in the NBA. Well, not only that, he's Jason Preston's favorite player. You know, talking to Jason Preston, he was saying he watches every NBA game that's on TV, and his two favorite players are Chris Paul and LeBron James. And he just watches them, studies what they do. But I think LeBron's trying to win MVP this year. He's been very vocal about the fact he was annoyed he was number two last year. So I think he's running his own little campaign. You know, he's saying, hey, guys, I'm 36. <laughs> and after last night's loss at the Lowly Pistons, they asked him, they're like, did you get tired in the second half? Because I think he went one for 11, one for 12. He was like, I never get tired. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's an Iron Man, and the guy's amazing. One of the all-time greats. There's three-pointers up and in for Ben Roderick. You just can't leave him. You, you cannot leave Ben Roderick open. 47% from three. That is a layup. A standstill three for Ben Roderick is going in. And Bala sidestepping down the lane and fouled. Put him at oh. the line. Wilson is first. But right here, if you're going to double, you've got to go all the way. You can't just sit in the paint and then leave a great shooter wide open if you're Jonathan Williams. He really didn't double Dwight Wilson down low, and he gave up a three. So he, did, he didn't do either. You've got to pick one. Mbala to the line, 70% this season. As you mentioned, he's a transfer from Texas Tech. He played on the Texas Tech team that went all the way to the national championship game, lost to Virginia in a close battle. Along the way, Texas Tech ended the season of Buffalo in the second round. That was the Buffalo team that won 32 games. Hey, he pulled the Kevin Durant move. <laughs> join, join the enemy that just knocked you out. 
other way around. Oh, <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yes. No, I'm talking about Oklahoma City to Golden State, Rob. Understood. Yeah, got it. See, I knew I, was, I knew I had it right. Laying it up and in. Another score for Ben Roderick. He's got seven points. Hoisting a three, Javon Graves. Yeah, and that's been really key. When you bring in Sagu and you let him run the point, now Javon Graves gets more time away from the basketball, and he's so good finding the gaps on penetrating kick. His outside shooting's been down quite a bit this year. And a foul. It's caught on Ronaldo Sagu, his first. Coach Whitesell said they maybe put a little bit too much on Graves' shoulders to start the year, and he's really come on of late, playing a bit fewer minutes, and he's off to a good start here tonight. Yeah, they want to keep him fresh, and he's got that versatility. He can play the one, he can play the two. And I like that Coach Weitzel said, man, we were putting too much pressure on him. Let's take him away from the ball. Let him just play. Williams slices to the rim. Couldn't finish. Rebound tracked down by Mbala. Reeves down the lane. Knocked away by McDay. The two high school teammates interacting there again. Quick fire three. Well off the mark for Vanderplas. He can make that shot. He's a really good shooter. That might have been a little bit quick for Ohio. Ohio led by as much as 10 at 17 to 7. Buffalo has crept back into the game, but hasn't led since it was 5 to 4. And more one and done defense for Ohio. That's what you got to do against Buffalo. They've done a really great job of keeping them off the glass. Preston, described by his coach as a pass first, second, and third point guard. Turns it over on the break, an easy layup for Sagu. And Josh Mbala running the break a little bit right there. Nice no-look dime. And Ronaldo Sagu is another guy who Coach Weitz will share with us. Loves to play basketball, loves the game, lives in the gym, and is only getting better. Buffalo back within two. We're back in 30 seconds. We'll have a full day of college hoops across all of our networks tomorrow, culminating with these two major matchups on ESPN and the app. It's number 15, Kansas, squares off against number 18, Tennessee, in Knoxville at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Then we have the number one team in the nation, Gonzaga, taking on Pepperdine in a big West Coast Conference matchup. That's at 8 o'clock Eastern tomorrow on ESPN and the app. Back here in Buffalo, Robert Lee, Noah Savage with you. Mac basketball on this Friday night. Buffalo has trailed most of the game. And Roderick scores again. He's got nine. Ohio comes into the game five and four in league play. Buffalo four and three. This is the first of two matchups this season between these two schools. They'll play again in Athens, Ohio on February the 27th. Scheduled two. Which every scheduling comment this season has to be prefaced with a bit of a footnote scheduled to play February 27th yeah and the, the message that was echoed from both coaches was how grateful they are to just be able to play and you know it's not going to be the ideal schedule but the disruptions are real I mean that really affects your program but they're just pumped to be on the floor tonight Ohio coach Jeff Bowles knocked on wood when he told us they haven't had a positive COVID test in their program since July As Preston turns it over alley-oop and Bala hammers it it was a great defensive play by Ronaldo Segu. He faked at Jason Preston on the ball side help and then tricked him. So when he jumped in the air, he turned it over. And that led to the great alley-oop. Buffalo starting to get some of those easy baskets. Yeah, and I think Jason Preston needs to come off those ball screens and look to score. He's got to drive to score and then pass when the help comes. Roderick is hot. Ben Roderick with 12 points. I mean, it's good. It, come on, Robert. It, when it leaves his hand, it's going in. Number three in white. Do not leave him. Five out of seven from the field. Mbala charging to the rim in an offensive foul. Yeah, and Josh Mbala, two turnovers in a row. He's trying to showcase his versatility with the handle, but I think it was a good job to get there by Ohio. Scoring picking up here. And Roderick has been hot for the Bobcats. He's got 12 early on, and OU leads it by five.
doing a good job turning defense into offense. Yeah, Buffalo wants to continue to get back in this game. It's going to be all about guarding the ball screen and Jason Preston. And right there, Ronaldo Segu did, did a great job of faking him out. He went and faked the help, and that led to the big-time slam by Josh Mbala. Oh, to be able to get up there and throw it down so easy. But you got to play the head game. When you're playing a great passer, he's testing you out. It's like a great quarterback who's looking off the safety, who's doing check down reads. If you're the defender, it's not enough to just run in and help. You've got to fake the help sometimes and jump back into the passing lane. And Coach talked about his, his balance between looking for his own offense versus setting up his teammates. Would you like to see him maybe look for his own shot a little more? Yeah, he's driving the pass right now. He's got to hit that second gear and try to get all the way to the bucket or come off looking to shoot the ball from three. He's only one out of three from the field. Wilson is foul. Bertram his first. Preston, in addition to his passing almost eight assists a game, does average a team high 16 and a half points a game. And yeah, Brock Bertram not thrilled with that call. He thought he had a great post position inside and went straight up. But that's what Dwight Wilson does. I mean, he is old school Pete Newell camp, you know, five star video block post moves over both shoulder. And he's got the up and unders, but his go-to move is probably that jump hook over the left shoulder. And I think he got a little bit bailed out there, but that's what he does. He's just going to go at you. Wilson into double figures for the 13th time this season in 16 games. He's got 10. Awkward sequence and a turnover. Run out for Preston to the rim, and he lays it in. Timeout, Buffalo. Just careless offense by Buffalo turning it over and leading to easy buckets for Ohio. I mean, he's, he's too good to give him easy ones. You, 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 you can't give him, you cannot give him easy layups in transition, that pick six that we talked about. And right here, good job of Buffalo to wall up, get the turnover, and look up right away, find Jason Preston. Ben Roderick has been fantastic this game. I mean, he's hit the three. He's playing great defense. And he had that great drive and drop step spin move. But Ohio, this is what the pace they want to play at, Robert. It's building the lead, it's playing in the half court, and then keeping Buffalo off that offensive glass. They've really done a great job of executing their game plan. Bobcats on a 7-0 run. And are shooting 60% from the field. Buffalo just 39%. That's the difference in this game right now. As Ohio is generating open looks and putting them in. Tough shot. Scored and a foul. Ronaldo Segu, chance for three. Yeah, Buffalo ran that pick and roll to the baseline instead of to the middle to give Ohio a different look. And that was just a great offensive move by Ronaldo Segu. Roderick the foul, his first. He's got about 41,000. Uh, viewers or followers on Instagram, not to make myself sound like the oldest person in the world here by saying viewers of Instagram, but he not only has the Instagram following, he himself watches a lot of film. And you saw it on that play where he really studied where the help was going to come from. Five points for Segu. Preston off a screen. Baseline jumper came up short. Out of bounds to Buffalo. a little design baseline screen right there to get him a four-footer. And, you know, Jason Preston a little frustrated with himself on that one. That's about the easiest shot he's going to get of the night in the half court. Ohio has led almost this entire first half coming up on the final two minutes. Turnover. Set up the secondary break here. Now run the half-court offense. Shooting a three, Roderick. And long rebound tracked down by the Bulls. Javon Graves, step back three. Rebounded by Jonathan Williams. Lost it again. Another turnover, Wilson's got it. Nine turnovers now for the Bulls. Nice touchdown pass ahead for the score. And what a seal inside by Ben Vanderplas as he was able to 
hold off his defender and catch that. That was really well done. Every time it looks like Buffalo is getting within a possession or so, Ohio opens it back up to a seven or eight point lead, led by as much as 10. Chopped at the ball, got all ball, but it comes away to the Bulls. Ohio closing out quickly. Three is rebounded by Preston. Bulls, or Bobcats on the run. Four on three, quick fire three, he got it. Ben Roderick, 15 points. And everybody wearing an Ohio jersey knew exactly where Ben Roderick was on the break. And you see the chemistry that makes him one of the best passing teams in the league. 15 for Roderick, averages 11 a game, and another turnover. And Jason Preston showing you why he's one of the most versatile players in the country. Great at getting the long rebound, head up right away, and finds one of his shooters on the perimeter, Ben Roderick, who is feeling it here in Buffalo. Roderick, a sophomore from Powell, Ohio, the Columbus area. He's nearly doubled his scoring average from last season. Six points a game as a freshman, 11 as a sophomore. And already up to 15 with a tree, uh, three three-pointers so far. But you saw how happy Jason Preston got when his teammate hit the shot. I mean, that's the type of player he is. He's so unselfish. Roderick, heat check, rebounded by Buffalo. Nickelberry can hold for one here. 13 seconds left. And Bala shovels it down low for a reverse layup. Javon Graves. Buff Ohio will get one last shot. Two seconds left. Preston floater at the buzzer. Couldn't get the roll. And that's the end of an entertaining first half. Yeah, Buffalo was able to get the layup inside, but Robert, you were right. They went too early. They gave Ohio the opportunity to close it out with the last shot, but Jason Preston as good and better than advertised. The passing, the size, the vision. Come back, we've got a great one here in Buffalo. Chilly night in Western New York. Temperatures in the teens outside and it's Ohio leading Buffalo as we get set to start the second half, 41. 32. Robert Lee, Noah Savage back with you. Ohio just executed better on offense in that first half. Shot the ball much better from the field. Buffalo really struggled with turnovers. Yeah, Robert, when, when you have a high firepower offense like the Buffalo Bulls with four guys averaging 14 more, or more points, you can't afford to turn it over. You got to get those guys going by not throwing it to the other team and not being so sloppy with the ball. I think we're just seeing the rust of the Buffalo Bills with the disrupted COVID season. Buffalo came into the game as the highest scoring team in the league, 82 points a game for head coach Jim Whitesell. Only 32 points in that first half, so well below that pace to score in the 80s. Ohio no slouch, they average 80 points a game, right on track for that with 41 in the first half. Right, but the Buffalo Bills are also, both Bulls are number one in the league in terms of field goal percentage defense, Robert. 27% is what they usually average, and they gave up, gave up above 50% to Ohio in that first half. Out of bounds, stays with the Bobcats in the white jerseys. Was it a foul? It was a foul. A little, little grab of the jersey on the backdoor cut. Keyshawn Bruton picked up his third foul of the game right away in the second half. Nice lead for Wilson who rocks the rim. How about the patience inside by Ben Vanderplas who, he was trapped, he had nowhere to go and just was so patient and waited for the big fella Dwight Wilson to come down to shoot. Graves led the Bulls in the first half with 10. Mbala had six. Jonathan Williams, their leading scorer who will shoot it here. Scored the first five points of the game for Buffalo and did not score again. He averages 20 a game. Mbala, second chance opportunity. And that's what the Buffalo Bulls need more of. It's just, if you miss the first one, go up and get it. Get another opportunity for your team. Bad turnover, four on one. Mbala, the easy land. Mbala already coming out in the second half with a lot more energy, active around the rim, and then filling the lane. 10 points for Mbala. Hands, hands, hands. 
Because I don't think Preston would have said that was the best half he's played all season. He struggled a bit, especially turning the ball over. He has it blocked away there. Four on three break for Buffalo. Preston, four points, five rebounds, three assists. Three from the left wing is good and a foul. Yeah, Buffalo is just totally revitalized here in the second half. On the offensive end, on the defensive end. And right here, little penetrating kick, great pass by Rondo Segu off the left-handed dribble. And that's what they need more of is penetrate, kick, play with confidence. And obviously, if you're Ohio, you cannot afford to foul a three-point shooter. Unable to complete the four-point play. It is a 7-0 UB run to pull within four. Yeah, Keyshawn Bruton wants that one back. And both these teams don't shoot it that well from the free throw line. I mean, Buffalo is only 65% from the line. And that's one area that I would like to see Jason Preston improve as well. He shoots in the 60s from the free throw line. Knocked away, out of bounds. Quick hands there by Mbala. Now we saw Ohio just score off the out of bound under. Great execution. Let's see what they've got up their sleeve now. I mean, that was beautiful the last time they got a jam. Ohio has led almost the entire game. Vanderplas knocked away. Wilson down the lane. Awkward shot. Scores and a foul. Yeah, Jonathan Williams got caught in no man's land as Dwight Wilson did a great job of, he loaded up like he was gonna jam this, and then at the last second, he realized that Jonathan Williams was in the restricted area, and he decided to just slow down and flip it up. But that was a really heady play inside by Dwight Wilson. Right up at his season average with 15 points. And every, he's made all six of his free throw attempts. Every time Buffalo gets within three or four points, Ohio opens the lead back up. Bulls continue to charge. Knocked away. Loose ball to Graves. Source to the rim and scores. It seems like Buffalo is scoring a little bit better on broken plays than on set plays. So I think they need to just ramp it up on the defensive end, get some passing lanes, and just start playing. I mean, they're, they're playing a little bit like they're holding back a little bit on the offensive end. McDay knocks down the triple. Yeah, just simple basketball by Ohio, inside, outside. When the double comes from Buffalo, they kick it out, and they're ready to step into those open threes. Both teams coming out firing to start the second half. Bruton is foul. So if you're going to double, you've got to go all the way, and Segu gets caught in no man's land. Luda McDay able to capitalize. But what you're seeing there, Robert, is that fantastic chemistry. I mean, they play so well together at Ohio. And it's a lot because of that guy right there. Jeff Bowles empowers them to make decisions. He gives them a lot of freedom. He'll put them in sets and then say, you guys make the decision. You guys are, are the drivers of this car. How refreshing is that for a player when your coach really <laughs> trusts you like that? Oh, man. It's the best. I mean, some people, like, some players couldn't handle that trust. You know, I'm not talking about anybody in particular, but it's fantastic. You know, and, and it lets guys – feel comfortable in their role and then play to their strengths and Ohio's strength is that the roles are really well defined but they really look for each other on the offensive end another foul on Bruton it'll be his fourth of the game he'll have to come out here with 1646 left to go that's really tough on Keyshawn Bruton maybe had a tiny bit of this extension with the off arm but very minimal contact Hardneck comes back in. He provided a nice spark in that first half in 10 minutes at four points. Energy plays as well for the transfer from Cincinnati. We haven't seen too much of this yet. Ben, ben Vanderplas on the block. Steps out and shoots the corner three and air ball. Rebound right to McDay. And Vanderplas saying, hey, man, that was a pass. <laughs> I promise you, that was a, a beautiful lob pass. Put that one in as an assist. Back out to a nine-point lead, which is what it was at halftime. Jonathan Williams has been quiet. The Max third leading scorer at 20 points a game. He has only five. Wide open, Harden at the three. 
Preston soars in for the board. You love those kind of high level of flair, one-handed rebounds. Hardnett has not made a three-pointer this season. He's 0 for 3. Preston the open three. Long rebound run down by UB. And a foul on Preston. It's on the floor, so to be out of bounds. An inbound situation for Buffalo after the timeout. They trail by nine. Buffalo has really dominated the MAC over the last five or six years. Bobby Hurley had a great one, won the MAC championship in 2015. He went on to Arizona State, gave way to his top assistant, Nate Oates, who had a tremendous four year run, won the MAC title in 2016, 18, and 19. And now Jim Whitesell taking over for his former boss, Nate Oates. Robert Lee and Noah Savage with you. Buffalo has really gotten it rolling over the last you know, four, five, six years. And it's a tough task for a guy like Jim Whitesell to keep that going and try to improve on what's been a great run. Yeah, and he's pulled out on his time as a head coach at Loyola and also as an assistant under Steve Lavin at St. John's. But how about what Nate Oates is doing down in Alabama? I mean, that team, they're similar to these teams we get tonight. So fun to play, shoot the three at a high level. They got Herb Jones playing the point forward situation with John Petty filling the lane, shooting threes. And then Jordan Bruner, the grad transfer from Yale, Robert. See, I always have get to those Ivy the Ivy League guys. guys. Yeah, absolutely. Alabama currently ranked in the top 10, number nine in the AP poll. Foul was caught on Vanderplas, so to put Hardnet at the line. We'll have a full day of college hoops across all our networks tomorrow, culminating with these two major matchups on ESPN and the app. Number 15, Kansas, squares off against number 18, Tennessee, in Knoxville at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Then we have the nation's top-ranked team, Gonzaga, taking on Pepperdine in the West Coast Conference. That's coming up tomorrow on ESPN and the app. Two free throws for Hardnet. He's up to eight points. Check that, six points now. Preston feeds Roderick, who had the hot hand in the first half. Couldn't find the range there, and it's rebounded by Jonathan Wo uh, Mbala, I should say. Hardnet attacks the rim, scores and a foul. Laquil Hardnet with eight points off the bench, double his season average. And Hardnet filled the lane and was looking to pass initially. Got into the paint, and watch, he's looking around, he's trying to find shooters. Nobody comes, so goes into his one-on-one -on -one stuff, great pump fake head and shoulders, and gets to the end one inside on Ben Vanderplas. What a move by Laquil Hardnet. Missed the free throw, Vanderplas the rebound. It's tough not to think of one of the greats from those championship teams recently, Montel McRae, who also wore the number one, built similarly to Hardnet, also shot a very high percentage like Hardnet does. He was a senior on that 2019 championship team. Out of bounds, good hustle there by Buffalo. to stay with Ohio with 11 on the shot clock. The Ohio fortunate right there, almost a turnover. Ben Vanderplas showing you his versatility as a four-man was the ball handler on the pick and roll that time on the outside with Colin Granger set in the screen. Three from the corner. Halfway down and saved back in bounds by Mbala. Roderick off the mark two times in a row. Jonathan Williams from the corner. And out of bounds to Ohio. Yeah, that's a good shot. I mean, that's Jonathan Williams who shoots it at 37% on the break. Wide open from the corner, but Buffalo just looks a little rusty, Rob. I mean, they, they definitely are feeling the effects of that unexpected two-game cancellation they're coming off of. We see Brock Bertram come back into the game of Apple Valley, Minnesota. As you said, Buffalo's last two games were postponed against Northern Illinois last week and then earlier this week against Central Michigan. So Buffalo has not played since last Thursday, eight days ago. Ohio comes off an easy win over Western Michigan on Tuesday, back home. Turnover, four on two break. Graves attacks the rim and he's fast. And that was a great dig by Jonathan Williams on the drive. 
I mean, he came in, he got all ball, and dug down and started that fast break. So it feels like we're seeing some glimpses of what Buffalo does, trying to get out on the break, trying to push the tempo a little bit. Roderick, his third foul of the game. He and Wilson each leading the way for Ohio with 15 points. Foul. And that already has Buffalo into the bonus. So with 14-16 left to go in the game, Buffalo is into the bonus and will shoot free throws the rest of the way. That was the second on Preston. And so we're gonna have, I'm gonna have to wait to eat my wings from, where should I go, Anchor Bar or? Or Duff's, that's the, that's uh, the their rival. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're both excellent. It's like pick your poison. It's like, who are you gonna, who are you gonna pick? Javon Graves, Jonathan Williams are both great. See the numbers Williams putting up this season. Average three points as a freshman, 11 points as a sophomore, and now up to over 20 as a junior. Yeah, one, one area that Coach Whitesell pointed to was the free throw line. I mean, he, he says in practice he hits 80 or 90% of those. And nice. for a guy who's such a mismatch problem, he's got, got to get to the line a lot, got to knock them down and use that line as a weapon. Wilson rolling to the basket. He's got 17. Seven out of seven from the field. Was set up by Preston. Yeah, you're seeing why he shoots 64% from the field. He just takes shots that he can make, and he, he tries to make every single one. He's just really, really efficient inside. Preston running the break. Leaves it for Roderick. Down the lane, right-handed layup is good. 17 for Roderick. You saw the respect that Buffalo has for Ben Roderick as he just looked at the rim from about 28 feet, and that got him an advantage on the drive. Back out to an eight-point lead. As you said, Hardnett has not made a three-pointer this season. Still 10 to shoot, and another turnover. Mark Sears, one on two. Sears to the rim, he's foul. So Ohio showing why they're so good. Their chemistry, always looking for each other. Great pocket pass inside. Jason Preston to Dwight Wilson. And then the C's parted for Buffalo's defense as Ben Roderick continues his assault here in Buffalo. I mean, he has just been fantastic from behind the arc and then able to get to the bucket two times as well. Sears has really come on. It coincided with a four-game absence for Jason Preston with a hamstring injury. Sears stepped into the starting lineup, and Coach Bowles said he played like a veteran. Yeah, I mean, look at that jump in percentages, 55% from the field. And now you can bring Mark Sears in and play Jason Preston off the ball a little bit. And what they'll do is they'll give him a little drift screen so he's going away from the ball. And that really switches up how you have to guard him on the defensive end. Five points for Sears, back out to a 10-point lead. Really done a nice job on Jonathan Williams, stepping back Bruton. He's in there with four fouls. It's rebounded by McDay. Offensive foul, and that'll be the third on Preston. It's a good call. He telegraphed that hesitation move a little bit going to his right hand and lowered the shoulder. But you're seeing the product of work and watching film as Sagu is a gym rat and he's a film rat too. And he was sitting on that hesitation move from Jason Preston. Alley-oop, backdoor Graves. It was knocked away in the oh. follow jam above the rim and they're gonna call it basket interference. Jim oh. Whitesell can't believe it. Now, That'd be okay in Europe, but Jonathan Williams, what a play, came from the rafters. And right here, let's see, take a look if that ball is above the cylinder. I don't know. I, 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 from that angle, it looked like it bounced out. I, you know, that's from the first angle, it looked like it was above the cylinder, but. Look at that elevation for Williams. Hang time like a nerf, root, uh, nerf hoop on the door. Takes a score off the board. 
Ohio back on offense. Down to eight to shoot. Preston sizing up the defense. Down to three. Sears, desperation. Shot was knocked away, and they will stop the fast break for a shot clock violation. That'll send us to a timeout. Ohio has led almost the entire game. Jeff Bowles and the Bobcats lead it by 10 on the road at Buffalo. Dwight Wilson has been a beast inside for Ohio, establishing position early on the drop step, relocating on drives and able to finish. And then being a big time screen and roll, great pocket pass by Jason Preston. And that big time throwdown jam, I mean, he's been unstoppable and doing it a number of ways. And for every big guy out there who says, you gotta shoot the three, you gotta be a stretch four nowadays, I mean, talk about old school game. It's about strength, positioning. He's got a little Charles Oakley in this game. And for a big guy, he's got soft hands. You know, you look at those highlights, you say, oh, well, anybody can make layups, but he's handling those passes and not fumbling them. He's handling the passes and yeah. then laying them in softly. Yeah, and that's so important as a big guy is that you establish trust in your guards, where if you throw me a pass, I gotta be able to catch it. Otherwise, they're not gonna look for you on their drives. Sears rebounds the Bruton miss. Starting to get away from Buffalo a little bit. Under 12 minutes to go here at Alumni Arena in Western New York. Yeah, and for a team that scores 82 points a game, they just don't look very good on the offensive end tonight. I mean, they are a really powerful offense, and you got to credit Ohio's defense for slowing them down, but they look really out of sync on that end. Four on the shot clock. Sears down the lane, hangs in the air. Wilson the rebound, and he's fouled. And again, it's the relocation of Dwight Wilson on the drive. When you move to the other side of the hoop as a big, you're gonna let yourself be available on the drive, but if, if, the, if the guard decides to shoot that, you're on the right side to grab the rebound. Wilson three out of three from the line tonight. He'll have two shots here. The X Games get underway for the 20th straight year from Aspen tonight. And they're on ESPN and the app at 10.30 Eastern, 7.30 Pacific. We'll have men's ski super pipe with Alex Ferreira looking to win gold again this year. And the Wendy Snowboard Knuckle Huck Encore. It's X Games coming up tonight. One out of two for Wilson. He's up to a game high, 18 points. And Ohio has matched its biggest lead of the game. What does Buffalo have to do to get going on offense here? I think a lot of their threes have been off of no penetration. And that's a lot better. I mean, it's a little bit of penetration, but at least it's swung around the horn. But they've got to attack and try to get a piece of that paint and try to start attacking Ohio on closeouts. Sagu from the corner. He's got eight points. And it's out of bounds to Buffalo. Nice play by David Nickelberry, the senior at 6'7", transfer from Memphis to cause that turnover. But right here, a little late on the closeout to Segu. Jason Preston just gives him an open three from the corner. And even though Ohio's in control, I mean, Buffalo's only down eight. And a team that has a lot of offensive firepower. Segu tried to make it back to back. Vanderplas the rebound. This is Jason Preston playing off the ball again. Sears will run the point. Lob it down low for Wilson. Big man matchup with Mbala. Skyhook gets his own rebound. And quick hands, it'll stay with Ohio with 18 on the shot clock midway through the second half. Now, I, I like that shot from Dwight Wilson, but the problem is you want to take that from about the restricted area. Now, he took it about from the MAC logo in the middle of the paint. Now, that's, that's a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar type <laughs> sky hook from First thing you're 10, thinking but, of right there, right? But, but from about four or five feet, Dwight Wilson is automatic with that hook. Vanderplas missed the three. This Kareem's sky hook, the most unstoppable <laughs> shot in, in basketball history. Yeah, he shot it from about 14 feet at times. I mean, it was, it was ridiculous the way he used to shoot that thing. Good kick. Nickelberry the three, it's good! First three of the game for David Nickelberry. Just like that, Buffalo back within five. It's Nathan Williams 
earlier in the game was settling for his three-point shot. That time he put it on the ground, got into the paint, and got an easy shot for his teammate. Wide open, London McDay, the three. Fight for the rebound, and it's controlled by Javon Graves. Two men down behind the play. Bulls running to the rim. Missed the shot, he'll go to the line. It's Nickelberry will have two shots. Two really good plays in a row by David Nickelberry. But to Nathan Williams, gets part of the paint, kick it out. David Nickelberry knock it down, and then He's able to fill the lane on the fast break and get to the free throw line. Of and note, that is the fourth foul on Ben Roderick. Yeah, that's big time because he's been really good. 17 points. Not only on the offensive end, but really controlling the defensive rebounds as well. But Laquil Hardnett at 6'8 is, is a really excellent athlete, and when his activity shows up, it's just a really powerful weapon for Buffalo. One out of two for Nickelberry. Into the game for Roderick is sophomore Miles Brown from nearby Rochester, New York. As we come up on nine minutes to go, Buffalo back within four. Not led since about 19 minutes left to go in the game. It's another turnover. Bulls running four on three. All the way to the rim, laying it in. And a timeout, Ohio. Jonathan Williams has eight points. And David Nickelberry again on the defense. With his activity, that's the steal that caused the fast break. But Buffalo, the running of the Bulls, they're trying to get it going here. Sagu for three from downtown. And then Jonathan Williams with the penetrating kick. Buffalo surging here at home. Jonathan Williams getting it done on the break. Big 12 challenge. This is about as good as it gets. Oh! It's about as good as it gets. Oh! Are you serious? Got it! They can stroke it, baby. That is big time. Count it. Yes! What a heavyweight fight. Some terrific matchups tomorrow. We mentioned at the top that Jason Preston is one of only three players in the country averaging 15, five and five. We'll see another one tomorrow. Right, Austin Reeves, that really big guard for Oklahoma playing against Alabama. And Oklahoma, the 19th best offense in the country, 40th best defense. He and Brady Manick are loads to deal with on that end. And, you know, that's, that's just a great event. And if you go on ESPN's website and you go to schedule and you look at tomorrow's schedule, it is just great game after great game. And that's the first one I schedule. That's a that's a 12 noon Alabama, Oklahoma. That's going to be a great one. The heart of college basketball season here in Buffalo. The Bulls on a 9-0 run to cut the lead down to two. And Miles Brown missed Jason Preston on that lob. He was wide open on the back screen. Preston works his way down the lane and scores. Only six points for Preston tonight. He averages 16 and a half. Right, you're seeing why he's considered that pass first, second and third type of guard, but he's got to score. He's got to, if the defense is reading you as a passer, you've got to be in attack mode off the pick and rolls. Traveling caught on Nickelberry. But Jason Preston gets into the lane and at 6'4". Yes, he, you can tell he's watching Chris Paul. That's a little Chris Paul move in the lane. Get the defender behind you, and then you kind of have your way, and they're able to pull up. He is pumped here on the road. He is playing with three fouls. Just over eight minutes to go. Preston flips it up and in. Back-to-back -back buckets for the junior from Orlando. And what a touch shot from about eight feet. That's really tough off one foot. Sagu launches a three and scores. 11 for Sagu. Cuts the lead in half. Preston mentioned that it 
LeBron is his favorite player. How many times do you see LeBron set guys up for the first three quarters, then in the fourth quarter he starts taking over, scoring the ball? Yeah, no doubt. And here he goes. I mean, the penetrating kick first. He relocates to the short corner. And he's got all those little push shots and flip shots. And, you know, he reminds me a lot of LaMelo Ball. He, re he really does. I mean, he's the, he's got the size. But then some of those in-between shots you just can't teach. Ohio can't believe the call. I think it's on Preston. It is. That'll be his fourth foul of the game. Huge call there with 7.14 to go. Preston has come alive. Yeah, he sets the table for most of the game. And now he's looking for his own offense. The stop on the dime behind the back. Teardrop in the paint. Ohio trying to hold on on the road. Ohio holding on to a five-point lead. Jason Preston has pick up, put up some big numbers of late, but maybe the most important number, those four fouls. He just picked up his fourth. And the natural comparison that you mentioned a moment ago, last year's lottery pick, LaMelo Ball. Yeah, he's got the size to pass over the defense, and he's got that vision where he knows where all four of his teammates are and all five of the opponents are, and then he plays at that pace where nobody speeds him up. And the fact that he, he takes pride and pleasure in setting up his teammates I mean the the comparison is is there and when you get to that next level and you play with better players that passing only becomes more important and, and he has really put on a show with his vision but again like it, coach Bowles told us he's got to take another step in terms of his aggressiveness scoring the ball he really does I mean the defenses are sitting on his passes at some times now and coach Bowles leaves him in with those four fouls Unquestionably, Ohio's most important player. He'll have to be careful down the stretch with 7.14 to go. And it's right on that line where you go, do you roll the dice and leave him in, or do you try to pull him and try to get two minutes and get him in after under five? Roderick also has four fouls, but he's on the bench. It's a three-point game. Preston playing with four fouls. It may also affect him offensively how aggressive he is driving to the rim. That's why he's got to use that vision, not charge. If there's help, stop on a dime. Down to 10 on the shot clock. Nice post feed for Wilson. Bangs into Mbala. Gets him in the air and draws the foul. What a move inside by Dwight Wilson. And Josh Mbala really doesn't think that that was enough for the foul inside. Just don't see that kind of footwork from big guys anymore. And it was really the patience. I mean, he caught it inside, and when he threw that head and shoulders fake. Look at look at this patience inside. He gets it. There's nine on the shot clock. He's got Josh Mbala, and that the pace of that fake right shoulder shimmy to the baseline. He took his time. That's how he would move if he was going that way. But just really precise with his footwork and with his body fakes. That was a really nice move inside. Makes one out of two, has 19 points, extends the lead to four. Under the basket, knocked away, and a foul. And that's going to send Wilson back to the line for one and one. I think it's caught on Mbala. It is. It's his third. Both teams into the bonus now. Buffalo shooting two free throws the rest of the way. Yeah, that was one of the key matchups we were looking at coming into this game. The big man battled down low with Josh Mbala and Dwight Wilson. And Dwight Wilson has dominated the last couple of minutes here in this game. This is the front end of the one and one, empty possession. Six and a half to go in Buffalo. Robert Lee, Noah Savage, our entire ESPN crew with you from Western New York. Bridget outside, Mac basketball here on a Friday night. Quick fire, three is good. Javon Graves did not hesitate, cuts the lead to one. His three-point shooting has been down 28% on the year, but that's a 1,200-point score right there. Saying, give me the rock late. He knows what to do with it. 15 for Graves. Vanderplas kick into the corner. Miles Brown buries the three. The local product from nearby Rochester, about an hour east of here in Buffalo. First three of the game. And it was all set up by the four-man with his great fake. And ben Vanderplas really knows how to play this game. 
Open three. Strong offensive rebound by Williams. He's also from Rochester and he scores. And a timeout, Buffalo. Two point game. Feels like Ohio has controlled the game and they have. They've led for about 32 minutes. Buffalo's led for a minute and a half. Back and forth, they trade baskets. Yeah, Sagu gets a little piece off that top pick and roll. But Javon Graves just makes a great shot. And then right there, Ben Vanderplas, he sold that fake and was able to get into the paint. Miles Brown, the sophomore, stepping up and hitting the three. But it's all about credibility, right? So when you show the ball and you just kind of flip it up fast, nobody's going to think you're shooting the ball. But when you bring it up slow like Ben Vanderplas did, you're able to get yourself open. You look at the max standings, questionable if every team will be able to play the full 20 games. Toledo leading the way, Buffalo in the middle of the pack at four and three, Ohio right behind, five and four. Top eight teams are scheduled to go to the MAC tournament in Cleveland. As with all things this year, that could be fluid. Maybe it's four, maybe it's six. Right now it's scheduled to be eight teams these two teams realistically safe from the bottom four as of now it would take a real collapse to get into the bottom four for either of these teams but you want to get up as high as you can not only for seeding but if they don't end up playing the full eight teams you want to get invited for that chance to go to the NCA. pick and roll with wilson couldn't finish buffalo can tire take the lead as we come up on five minutes to go williams stutter step and he scores game is tied what a move in transition. I mean, now you see why Jonathan Williams is such a matchup problem. That's your three man, that's your four man at times. Just shake and bake between the legs on the break. What a move. Buffalo has come all the way back to tie the game. Williams with 12 points. So now if you're Ohio, play through Jason Preston. Let him make all the decisions. Tough fadeaway, difficult shot. Rebound comes away to Nickelberry. He was obviously looking for the whistle there. It never came. Buffalo looking for its first lead since the 18 minute mark. They've got it. Nickelberry chance for three. Oh, offensive foul. Yeah, everybody in the building thought it was an and one. I mean, that was a really good spin move. But watch underneath, David Nickelberry's off arm. Yeah, and it's, it's a stiff arm behind him, and it's a good call. And Miles Brown did a good job to not give up on this play. He's trying to get back in front, and that's an easy call for the official. But from our initial angle, that looked like an and one, but that's an excellent call. Three fouls on Nickelberry. Four and a half minutes to go. Tie game. Preston down the lane, hangs in the air, and scores. 12 for Preston. Great long steps. Looking like Manu Ginobili on the drive, and then he pulled the ball back to protect it. Williams, three for the lead. Rebound run down by Miles Brown, who's provided a nice spark. What a bounce pass and blocked. Graves just rejected. I mean, we call that golf a worm burner. Yeah, I mean, most players won't even attempt that pass. That was unbelievable. Jason Preston, so creative on the offensive end. We'll have a full day of college hoops across all our networks tomorrow, culminating with these two major matchups on ESPN and the app. Number 15, Kansas, squares off number against number 18, Tennessee, in Knoxville at 6 Eastern, 5 Central. Then we have the number one team in the country, Gonzaga, looking to keep it rolling when they take on Pepperdine in a West Coast Conference battle. Let's take a look at tonight's Wendy's Wooden Watch, John Fulkerson from Tennessee, having a nice season for the Vols. Yeah, and they're, they're having an excellent season in SEC. And you know what, John Fulkerson, thanks for coming, but... Uh, that's Luca Garza's award this year. I'm sorry. Maybe Corey Kispert, but Fulkerson having an excellent season for Tennessee. But the way Luca Garza came out early this season and just dominated and continued to throughout the season, I think he's, it's him or somebody from Gonzaga if they continue to just dominate. 
Gonzaga looking to extend what is now the nation's longest winning streak after Winthrop lost earlier tonight. We're coming down the stretch here with Ohio leading it by two. Ohio in the white jerseys, Buffalo in the black. Preston playing with four fouls. Vanderplas thought about the three. Under the rim, he lays it in. And you see the basketball IQ. He saw Sagu switch onto him. He said mouse in the house and then took him baseline and got an easy layup. Only six points for Vanderplas. Nice extra pass to Williams who rocks the rim. What a dish by Josh and Bala. Man, you were seeing some really skilled big guys on both sides. Two point game. Ohio grimly hanging on to the lead. Not giving up the lead since it was 18 minutes left to go in the first half when Buffalo led 5-4. to four. Preston backing in. Throws up a wild shot. Rebound volleyed out to Sagu. Trying kind to of take advantage of the mismatch with Sagu inside. Williams, three for the lead. Rebounded by Mbala. He is blocked by Vanderplas. And Buffalo can't believe it. They thought Ben Vanderplas Fouled and Bala inside. Two and a half minutes to go. First of two scheduled matchups between these teams this season. They'll play again at the end of February in Athens. Preston down the lane, fade away, push shot is up and in. 14 for Preston and a timeout. Buffalo. But just great use of the pick and roll and then size by Jason Preston, he got into the paint and then turned that drive into a post move and showed you kind of some of those trademark shots with the little flippers. Right here, he sees Jonathan Williams, just a little bit of a show, not really coming with the double team. And able to go inside on Segu and flip that one up and in. But he's deadly, I mean, you see when he gets to the free throw line and once he has that kind of advantage where he can mess with you on the defensive end, where you're on his hip or you're behind him. He's got all sorts of finishes in there. And then there's always that threat that he's gonna just fire it out to a three-point shooter at the last second. And that's what makes him so tough to guard, is that he's got all the skills, but the decision-making and the vision is elite. Preston, 14 points, eight rebounds, four assists. Reset it, Ohio with two timeouts left. The possession arrow favors Buffalo. But Buffalo's got to go at him. I mean, he's got four fouls. Mm -hmm. Get him involved in whatever offense you're going to run right here if you're Buffalo. Graves going one-on-one, -on -one, and he traveled. Rudy. Buffalo turned it over 10 times in the first half. Now only 14 turnovers total. Luda McDay with the great defense inside for Ohio. And Javon Graves. The excellent player, the senior, just with a little bit of a mistake there with the footwork. Two minutes to go. Ohio trying to extend the lead. Willing to run some time off the clock. Down to 10 on the shot clock. They'll start the offense. Preston lost it. Two on one. To the rim, Graves, and he's fouled. Good foul by Vanderplas, although it's his fourth. Graves has really struggled from the line this season. But Javon Graves showing you why he's been such a great player for such a long time here. Little poke away of, J of Jason Preston and then gets it on the fast break. And a chance to go for the to the line, attacking the Ohio transition defense. Javon Graves is shooting only 51% from the line this season. And he makes the first calmly. Over his first three years, he was 63%. The senior stepping up with the first free throw. One out of two. And a steal, Graves lays it in! And not a good decision by Luda McDay as he was falling down. It's like what we talked about before. Take the dead ball turnover. If you're gonna travel, you're gonna travel but he led Buffalo right to an easy layup. 18 for Graves, a one point game with a minute 20 to go. Preston lost it, gets it back with 13 to shoot. 
Wide open, London McDay. And a huge call here, it's an offensive foul. McDay his first. Right here, if you're London McDay, just travel. I mean, just you can't throw it underneath your own hoop and give Javon Graves that easy layup inside. Ended up being a three-point possession for Graves. Buffalo can take the lead with a score with one minute to go. Extra passing, wide open three. Offensive rebound for Buffalo. Digging it out in Bala, it's on the floor and it's a jump ball. The air would favor Buffalo. And it does. One timeout left for Buffalo. They're in the double bonus. If there's a foul, they'll shoot two. But right here, rugby scrum inside in the paint. And right there, you know, they let him play there. I like that because letter of the law right there, Javon Graves is all over London McDay's back. That could easily be a foul. Set play out of the inbounds. They'll get it onto the block for Jonathan Williams. Carving his way to the basket. Follow is up and in for Mbala. Buffalo takes the lead with 40 seconds to go. And Ohio will call a timeout. First lead since it was five to four. Buffalo just stayed with it and on that possession, Jonathan Williams got to one side of the hoop with a tough shot, but Josh Mbala never gave up on the play. And that's devastating if you're Ohio because you had the lead the entire game. But right there, pretty good defense by Ohio, but you have to come up with that rebound and cannot let Josh Mbala get to that offensive rebound and put back. But if you're Ohio right now, this is devastating. You felt like you were in control of this game the whole time. So now you got to reset. You're only down one. You've got 37 seconds left to go. They're going to get the ball to Jason Preston. And the last couple of times down, it's been moving him away from the ball to get him back involved with the, with the pick and roll up top to start moving some of that help before you put him in that pick and roll situation. And that's what you foresee them going with here, getting it to Preston, letting him create? Yeah, he's so good that if you, if you spread out and you just get him any advantage, he's going to be able to put Ohio in a good situation in terms of scoring because if you help, he's going to find shooters. And we've seen if you don't help, he's got the size to get to those little 15-footers in the lane. Jeff Bowles definitely stressing to his team what they want to do on offense. But if Ohio does not score, they need to foul Buffalo immediately to lengthen the game and put Buffalo at the free throw line. One timeout left for each team. 38 seconds to go. Roderick is back in the game. He's joined by Vanderplas, Preston, Wilson, and McDay. If you're Ohio, be ready to shoot it when you're open. If Buffalo helps, Jason Preston will find you. So for both teams, rely on what you do in practice. 12 second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Preston sets up the high ball screen. Onto the block for Vanderplas. Wild shot. Rebounded. Wilson, he puts it in with 26 seconds to go. Buffalo has one timeout left, and they'll call it with 22 seconds remaining. And that's why Coach Bowles is down there and I'm up here. <laughs> Everybody in the building is expecting Jason Preston to get the ball in a pick and roll. They go down low to Ben Vanderplas instead. Now he's too worried about getting the foul, but he made a good move inside. And there is the big man inside, Dwight Wilson, with a great putback. But how about using Jason Preston right there as a decoy? And he was wide open at the top of the key. I think even Buffalo was stunned that that's what they went to late in the game. Wilson now with 21 points, 8 out of 10 from the field to lead all scores. Now, Buffalo out of timeouts. 22 seconds left, will inbound near midcourt. Their best offense seems to be, as you said, out of more chaotic situations. They're yep. going to have to run a set here. Well, the same thing is you want to get the help moving on the back line of the defense. So put the ball in Jonathan Williams' hand or Javon Graves' hand. But then if they don't have the ball, 
get something going along the baseline with Ronaldo Segu and Josh Mbala moving. So even if you don't make the first one, you open it up for those putbacks, which are so key in late situations. If you're Ohio and you get a miss, your job is not done. You've got to secure this rebound against a dangerous offensive rebounding team like Buffalo. Same situation for Buffalo. If they do not score, they must foul to extend the game and put Ohio at the line. Yeah, and Ohio can't foul. I mean, it's a bonus now. That's really difficult. you got to play great defense and not foul. Williams, great. Hands left. Jonathan Williams down the lane to the rim. Blocked. Loose ball, Wilson. And a foul against Buffalo. Huge defensive play by Vanderplas. Ben Vanderplas inside. Look at the hands. They go straight up. Great defensive play inside. And then Dwight Wilson, so strong, holding on to that basketball. It'll put Dwight Wilson at the free throw line for one and one. He is five out of eight from the line tonight. He is 64% for the season. Buffalo does not have a timeout with 12 seconds to go. Even if he makes both, if you're Buffalo, attack the basket. Because Ohio cannot foul you. Try to get an old school and one. Missed the front end. Buffalo a chance to win the game here. 10 seconds to go. Down by one. Williams awkwardly in the lane. Five seconds left. Sagu with three. Sagu for the win. No good, and Ohio wins it 76-75. They got an open look. Ronaldo Segu is a great three-point shooter, shooting 50% from behind the arc. And he went to that left-handed little hesitation mode. That's a great shot. If you're Buffalo, you'll take that shot to win. But Ronaldo Segu gets the ball on the wing and then puts in his left hand, little T-Mac, hezzy move. And he missed that thing by a couple of inches. Almost had the clutch game winner for Buffalo. And Ohio able to hold on. And they are pumped. I mean, you're seeing two excellent basketball teams in the MAC. Good contest there by Miles Brown, who played some important minutes off the bench due to foul trouble late. He contested that shot, forced the miss, and Buffalo falls to four and four in the MAC. Ohio improves to six and four. Ohio has now won three in a row. They'll meet again at the end of February, but three straight wins for Ohio and six out of their last eight. Yeah, and Jason Preston was as good or better than advertised. He's a star in college basketball, a triple-double threat. And I like how he managed the game. He got everybody involved early and then went into attack mode off the pick and rolls late. But it was a team effort, and Dwight Wilson was huge for Ohio tonight. Wilson finishes with 21 points. Roderick had 17, Preston 14. at 18 points, Mbala and Jonathan Williams each finished with 14 as Ohio wins its third in a row. They'll take on Central Michigan on Tuesday, come back home to take on Eastern Michigan on Saturday, Buffalo on the road next Tuesday at Ball State, back home to face Miami on Saturday. We take one more look at the last play of the game. Ohio dodges the bullet on the last minute three-point shot for Noah Savage, our entire ESPN crew. Robert Lee saying so long from Buffalo. We send you to Robert Morris and Wright State.